Hello there. I'm Scotty. You're not. Welcome back to remake a -thon. We're looking at remakes in this one. Now, it was fun with Dick and Jane, a remake of a 1977 film starring George Segal and Jane Fonda. Wherein a couple, after one loses his job, the other one quits her job. Uh, they find out they're in financial ruin, so they decide to start becoming criminals, robbing places. There's other things throughout the film, but this is 2005. I do believe Bruce Almighty came out either the same year or after this, and it's a much better film, in my opinion. But my issue with this movie is that I remember clearly, or maybe Bruce Almighty came out after, before this, 2004, right? I remember clearly all of these of the trailers that I saw heavily, heavily saying, you know, oh, they'll turn into crime. They're going to rob places. And that's really a small part of the film. Uh, like it, the small chunk towards maybe the, the middle, later half. There's like a chunk where that's what they do. But it's not the entire film. You know, and you start the film, and he's going to get this job, get this uh, promotion, right? I never worked in an office job like this, so I wouldn't know, but uh, he's going to get a promotion. He's going to be VP, right, of communications or something like that. And it quickly discovers that he's actually a scapegoat for the company, which is now in ruin because the, all the stocks went... <laughs> And, yeah. And before this, he had convinced his wife to quit her job. And so the one thing that, I, I don't know if they address this, but it's the biggest issue. Why didn't she go back to her job and say, hey, um, I'm sorry, I want to apologize. You know, we don't see how she quit. If you saw that she had some big, bombastic, screw you, I quit type moment, sure. But we didn't see her quit. We don't get the information until he comes home and find out that she quit. So, why doesn't she go back to where she was and go, you know what, I quit because my husband said we're going to have enough money and we're not, so can I please, please have my job back? They don't even try to do that. They just, oh, we're in ruin. And like, it, when this movie starts, I'm like, these guys are, to quote uh, William Fichtner from the Ninja Turtles movie, stupid rich. They're stupid rich. They got maids, they got people, they got their own people doing their lawns and landscapes and yeah, they got he's got a beamer, that sort of thing, just, yeah. Housekeeper, excuse me. Housekeeper, not made housekeeper. They're stupid rich. To quote William Fickner. So I'm like, what would, like, he, okay, so he loses his job, I'm thinking. But no, it's not just he loses his job. He loses his job. Everyone who had stock, all their money was tied up in the stock of the company because that went out the window. They no longer have any money, which, you know, that's why I don't do stocks. Because, you know, that that's a that's gambling. You know, that, no, I'm not going to do that. I could make a lot of money and also lose a lot of money, you know. I'm just saying. But, but I don't do the stock market. I just, no. So now they're in ruin. They're, excuse me. Their lawn is being repossessed, which... Don't, didn't know that was a thing. They don't. The car is repossessed. They have to sell some of their items, like the TV. I'm with the kid. Don't sell the TV. What are you gonna watch on it? Maybe you got movies, I guess. But it's a 2005, and they had flat screen TVs in 2005. That's what they're getting rid of. A flat screen. Well, they had that, but 
Yeah. And it's just all down the hill. The maid decides to stay and that or the, the housekeeper and they're gonna pay her for with appliances. And there's the joke there's a running joke that she's teaching the son uh Spanish and that leads to an unfunny joke in my opinion. There's a payoff to it, but it if you take this section out of the film, it wouldn't matter. There's always parts in films and comedies in general like, oh, if you take this section out, would it do anything to the plot? No. No. And there's even a thing at the end of the film that would justify the kid knowing Spanish. He's teaching, you know, Dick how to speak Spanish in the end. But here... Uh, so, here's how I would have done this scene and how they did it, okay? So, here we go. So, first of all, he Dick gets told by his housekeeper, oh, my cousin can help you with a job. And it's one of those things where the Mexicans, they stand outside the building and, hey, we need someone to paint, you know, who can paint. And, okay, we'll, you know, first one to jump in the car does it, you know, back of the truck. And so Dick makes it, but another Mexican also makes it and knocks him down. That's where I would have ended the scene. Cut to him coming home, beaten up, bruised. Period. But no, we have to, you know, or cut to the wife, what she's doing. She does this thing. She's testing out this beauty product that's supposed to be better than Botox. Botox is not good anyway, but like, have you seen how many famous faces it's ruined? Like, they need, they should outlaw plastic surgery on faces. Because look, you look at most of the Hollywood stars out there, and it's because they have botched plastic surgeries. You know, I could name off some, right? Too many to name. I, I can't think of any on top of my head, but there is various celebrities who get this plastic surgery that looks terrible, yet they still parade around with it. I don't know how you could look in the mirror and say, I, I look good. Eh. I'm sorry. You don't. You, my butt cheeks look better than your face. Put my, put my ass in a movie. Looks better than your face. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway... So she had this stuff that messes her face up. So both of you and stuff. So we cut from him falling to her doing that, or we go back and forth between this, and then we cut to they both come home and they're like, he's like, and she's like, mm, you know, and he's like, I'm home. And she turns around and then you see for the first time what happens to her because they show it while she's sitting there, you know. What if, like, you, you see that she does this thing, and they you go to inject it, and it cuts. And then we see Dick. Dude, the way I do it, the way I said it would happen, and he comes home, he's like, honey, what a very good day. She turns around. Yeah. You know, it wasn't very much, you know. But no, that's not where they cut it. Instead, they had this whole s subplot, I guess you could call it, where... Dick gets arrested, immigration shows up, and because somebody stole his wallet, they don't believe he's American. Okay, now there's a great comedy film called Born in East LA, man, I was. Born in East LA, starring Cheech Marine. That makes more sense because he's actually Mexican. And can't prove, you know, even though I think he has, his, or he forgot his ID or something. He can't prove he's from East LA, you know. But, in this, he's the only white dude with a bunch of Mexicans. Come on. And then they do the gag where oh, the guy who stole his wallet, who's obviously Mexican and not him, gets to go free because, his, because of the ID. But here's the thing. His picture's on the goddamn ID. So we look at, oh, that's not you. And look at this guy who's claiming to be Dick Harper, who's claiming to be American. It doesn't work. This joke doesn't work. And it only, it only pushes out the runtime here. It makes the movie longer. You take, you take this whole subplot with that. If you cut that out from where I said it was, 
He's him coming home. No. And they, they still they keep going with this joke too because then Jane has to go pick him up at, and he just to jump the fence. Not just him. Bunch of Mexicans pile into the back of the hatchback and they drive off. One thing I can praise them on is they didn't go the extra mile with this joke and have them all wake up with the Mexicans in their house. No, they're still inside the... Inside the car. The Mexicans aren't there, but it's just the two of them. So, that's one thing. And yeah, the 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 kid learning Spanish joke is it gets the payoff here, where they call the phone, and and Billy picks up and says "Hola," and immediately they thinks that immediately immigration is like, okay, he's nice to get throw him in. I don't get it. Like. Beside that, wouldn't you be able to do a fingerprint, right? Do the fingerprint, and they'll show you his name is Dick Harper. He was born in America. Boom, American citizen. I don't, I don't get it, right? Doesn't make any sense. And then we start the very short montage of robbing. They, he tries to rob a gas station. This, this is where he hits rock bottom. It's where he finds out that his house. He's getting evicted from his house. So, that's when they decide to turn to crime. So he tries to rob a gas station, and again, you could be, you could do the joke, how I would have done it. He goes to grab, he goes to grab the gun. So the thing here is that the one guy who is short, he switches with the tall guy because it's time to switch shifts. He goes to grab the gun out, but looks out and stops. And then runs off with the slushy. That would work. But instead, we got to do three minutes of him trying to get a gun out. That's not funny. And then he still see. <coughs> and then he sees this guy, and then still tries to get the gun out. I'm like, stop. You. And then he ends up running with the slushy anyway. And I'm just like. Comedy. Where is it? This is not funny. If he if he went to get the gun out, looked up, saw the big guy, had cold feet, grabbed the slushy and ran off. That would be funny. And then they try to rob a dispensary or whatever it is was back then. The marijuana the pot store. That doesn't work out. They do rob donuts from a gas station, but that's not really much of anything. And then finally they try to rob a bank, but aren't able to because another couple who also work for Global Dine try to rob the place and they get arrested. So that's when they decide to stop. All this is amounted to about 30 minutes of the runtime, where in the trailer made you think it was going to be the whole movie. Because I'm sitting watching this going, when are they going to start robbing stuff? It takes so long to get to it. It's like an hour before they decide to do it. And then it's only a half hour. You know, maybe it's not even that long. How long is this movie? Ninety minutes. So maybe it's not an hour and a half hour. Maybe it's like the first half hour, and then a half hour, and then the last half hour is. So again. Jim Carrey decides to go over the top with his performance and does this whole thing where he's a, you say he's a corporate puppet. And that's where we see Frank, who is played by Richard Jenkins, who was the guy who gave him the uh, promotion at the beginning. And he basically tells him that Jack, uh, Al Baldwin's character, the guy in charge, he set the whole thing up. When he was doing the interview, he, he did all the thing, he dumped all the stocks and embezzled Four hundred million dollars from the company. So now their plan is to get that four hundred million dollars back, and of course it takes forever to do because they have to have. If this was like a crime thriller instead of a comedy, things would get done faster. But they have this form, and he's supposed to have Jack sign, and of course because it's a comedy, as soon as he gets out, wing is over it, flies with underneath the lawnmower. So now they have to go get another form. 
And after about 10 minutes of, of doing this, finally getting it to him, it wasn't in with, well, uh, Frank gets arrested for DUI, or DWI, same thing. And Frank, or Jack, realizes that the whole thing is fake, and then it ends with Dick holding him at gunpoint for a check that he signed for. I couldn't read how much the amount, maybe it was like 50 cents or something, a dollar, I don't know. And this has turned out to be a ruse by Dick to get the guy's uh, signature because here and now, in the third act of the film, we find out that Jane was an art major and can duplicate the signature. You know, copy it. What's it called? You know? Yeah. Then they, they didn't even mention she was an art major before. Yeah, and they end up taking this four hundred million dollars instead of putting in a like an offshore account, it's put into another account that is used as a pension fund for the people of Global Dine, so it saves people at the end. And that's that. Although I feel like there's some legal avenues where Frank can Jack can just, you know, I don't know. I feel like he could just do the same thing he did before, right? Maybe not. I don't know. That's how it ends. And it just... I guess it's a good ending. But it just... I was kind of disappointed in this movie. I, I thought it would be more crime stuff than robbing. And it's only a small part of the film. Maybe even 10 minutes montage of them doing it. When the trailer said that was what the movie was going to be. And it's barely in this movie. 10, 20 minutes maybe. 15 I don't know. It just... I don't, I don't know. It's a little disappointing. The climax of the original, they rob him for 200000 because it's 1977, instead of 400 million. And that's more of a robbery than this was. This was like Ocean's Eleven starring Jim Carrey. And yes, we're gonna, we're gonna take, we're gonna do that later on in this, but... This was fine. I'll give it a middle of the road. It's fine. It's fun. Fine and fun. It was, it was a fun watch, but you know, if I can compare Jim Carrey to Robin Williams, they let Robin Williams go with his comedy and then would go and take what they needed. They would, they would edit it, you know. A lot of times with Jim Carrey's comedies, they just let him go, and most of the time it's whatever he did that they can, that, you know, that is not profane. There is one F-bomb, F-bomb, when they find out that is Jane that gets it. She goes, a fucker, and he's like, hun, language. Yeah, but like, just, I know that, you know, Jim, Jim Carrey's known for his wacky comedy, but, well, that worked earlier on in his career. By this point, people were getting sick of it. You know, even Tommy Lee Jones was calling out his buffoonery on Batman Forever in 95. This is 10 years later. Although, Tommy Lee Jones cannot talk because he's just, just as goofy in that movie. But by this point, it's just like... I feel like Bruce Almighty was the last good Jim Carrey comedy. And then this was probably like, oh, he's way too much. And... I think he toned it down after this. This was probably penguins and all that. I just, I, I don't know. It just, I, I, just, I feel like he's going too much in these scenes. The whole puppet thing, the whole he he gets hit, so he has to have a messed up voice. What's the point of having a messed up voice other than to sound foreign when they talked it when the IRS comes or INS? Excuse me. INS, immigration. And I'm just, it's stupid. I'm like, why is he talking like that? And then when they show up, and just, I'm like, oh, I see. He's supposed to sound foreign. But getting hit in the mouth would not change your voice like that. That's not realistic. I don't know. 
because uh, they didn't care for it as much as some people do, but it's fine. So, what are your thoughts on fun with Dick and Jane? Speaking of Robin Williams, I think it's time we check out a remake he was in. Yeah. Which a Disney film. Robin Williams, Shooter McGavin, and Green Goop. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.